All right, so welcome back to Newcastle Central. Let's have a little bit of a look at how I've started to make progress here on this first of the buildings. This is the extension to the main part of Newcastle Central train shed. So let's look at some of the roofing materials, how I did some of the roofing uh, beams themselves, and then start to look at some of the actual wall textures too. Okay, so this is then that uh, extension on the main part of the train shed that we've been working on. And so this is kind of the newer part of Newcastle Central Station. And at the end of the first part of the video, this wall wasn't in place. This one was. This near side one was. And the two ends were there. And this slight curve to this. This one is straight, that back wall. Um, when it's actually out on the platform, it is ever so slightly curved. Um, and so what I'm trying to figure out is I had marked intervals all the way across for where I can then put in some of these roofing pieces and so these are just laser cut so measured appropriately all will be at the same height and then it would just kind of set itself in there like that and so as with a lot of my videos you know I have kind of thought this through I've kind of planned this out but I am also then just kind of talking through as I go and so uh, what you get at the start of the video here might not be how things are in 20 minutes at the end of the video but uh, my idea is that probably going to laser cut another three or four of these and kind of space them out um, if I was doing them every inch and a half I would have 20 of these that's kind of a lot of these to put in place and uh, I don't think that the roof is really going to weigh all that much but what I would like is to have probably you know four or five of these in place and then uh, I think that would be enough that I know I would then have a consistent height all the way across and then kind of the other ones in between um, maybe wouldn't need to be laser cut they could just be thin strips that I could kind of put on one end go over to get the right curvature and then cut them um, again because I can't use the big laser cutter that I've been hoping to use for all of this it's going to create a lot of waste if I try and individually cut those because I can probably only do about two or three at a time as opposed to being able to put down a 12 by 24 inch um, or even bigger sorry 24 by 48 inch I think I could have done um, somewhere somewhere in between there anyway um, but I could have put down a much bigger sheet and kind of laid it out on the computer to figure out minimizing the amount of scrap um, but because I've got a much smaller bed on the laser cut here at home um, I don't want to be you know kind of wasting a whole bunch of that because I've got you know essentially I would have 20 to do here and then I have another three um, for the main part of the Dobson trench and that main part of Newcastle Central setting, the, the, those three arches that are all together. And so that adds up to a lot, you know, we're looking at 80 of these in total. Um, you know, that's that's a lot of wood. So I'm hoping, I'm going to try this out anyway, um, try and laser cut, uh, yeah, another three, four, five maybe along the way. See what that looks like and then see if there was a way that I could then... Uh, yeah, if I could then just start to bend some small strips to at least get all of those roofing trusses in place, and then when the roof goes over, it would kind of hold itself all in place quite nicely. Okay, so I went ahead and added a few more of those roofing beams. I did put four or five of them in place uh, originally, and uh, I figured I might as well just put the rest of them out. So they're all spaced right around one and a half inches. Right around the middle is a little bit more of a gap just because I thought there was going to be a little bit uh, of flex. That's where um, kind of not the sharpest part of the curve. It's not a sharp curve at all, but I didn't want to have them right at one and a half inches there. So right around here and here, it's a little bit more spaced. I'm um, getting closer to two inches on, on one or two of them, but otherwise they're all spaced out at one and a half inches. And so this then is kind of that curve that we're talking about and so this is where it now starts to get fun because we've got compound curves and that was a fun word I can thank one of my friends for when I was trying to explain what was going on here essentially the problem that I've had all along with trying to do this is I need the roof to curve in two directions at the same time so typically um, a lot of the model railway uh, builds that I've seen have curved roofs like this it's very prototypical and so you've got roofing sheet that kind of curves like that very cool well Newcastle its main uh, its main kind of deal is that 
the building also kind of curves. And so the, this wall here curves, this near wall, and that far wall also curves. Well, so now whatever roofing material we use has to be able to curve that way, and at the same time it has to be able to kind of curve that way. And I'm sure my hand is doing wonderful movements there. So this is why I'm now trying to figure out, okay, I've then got <laughs> compound that. To compound the compound curves, what I would like is to have right around probably this kind of way. So maybe it's a third of the way. Maybe it's a little bit more of a third. Yeah, let's go with a third of the way. What I would like is to have um, some kind of solid material or flexible material, but what, some kind of solid material that I can then put over covering for what would have been some kind of metal roof. I um, haven't quite decided exactly what kind of metal look that I'm going for, because again, this is a balance between what would the roof actually have been versus what is going to look good in a scale model. Same with the brickwork. What was the actual brickwork compared to what brickwork can I find and what brickwork do I think looks good? And I'm kind of leaning towards Ashar Stone for that. Um, so yeah, I, I'm thinking maybe it's about a third of the way, so up to about here maybe you would have metal roofing material. Same on the other side, we would have uh, some kind of metal roof that would you know, kind of go around there. And then this top third would be somewhat uh, transparent, somewhat see-through, which again would be somewhat prototypical. Can't remember exactly on this extension piece if that was the case, but there was some kind of um, you know, lighting that could come through, it wasn't glass by any means as, as far as the photos that I've, that I've seen and that I can remember. Um, but again, it's trying to find the balance between, it's a model, and so I would still like to be able to, you know, to stand here and somewhat see inside of it. Um, and what also is, is going to still somewhat prototypically resemble what Newcastle Central was. The other problem with this more compounding, more compounding is that um, the spaghetti meatballs that I stole from the kids are what is holding this in place, is holding this curve, and so what I have, uh, what I have is some small steel rods, and so my plan is to put steel rods in each of the corners, right around there, drill down through the top of the platform, down into the baseboard beneath it so that I would have a steel rod that would come all the way up and then the station building will kind of sit. I don't know if the steel rod would remain or the steel rod is going to be attached to the, the building and then you lift it all off. Um, but regardless, that works great, but as soon as you take it off, um, this front wall kind of stays curves, that back wall, eh, not so much. So whatever roofing material I put in place also needs to essentially then try and keep this curve. And this is where, boy, it's starting to get difficult. Um, because the wood is, is thin enough that it can flex, the other thing that I have looked at and that I am going to try and replicate is that as well as these curved uh, roofing beams, there were also steel rods that would run all the way across, um, pretty much at the height of the walls here. So they would run across and then there will be one that would come down perpendicular um, pretty much from the middle of each of these roof beams and run down. I'll try and put a picture up so that makes some amount of sense. Um, but even if I do that with uh, you know steel rod running across to try and recreate that look, it's not going to keep this flex. And so this is now what I'm trying to figure out is maybe I put a thick piece of wood in uh, around the middle that would hold the flex, um, you know, maybe steam that, uh, steam heat it, and then when it cools and hardens, it would maintain the flex, because um, I'm kind of in a bind in that I still have, I've tried a couple of different ways, any material that I'm putting in place um, isn't then rigid enough that once the wet, essentially, the cans move out the way, it's not strong enough to hold this curve. The roof, obviously, is, is it just follows the beams. Um, so, I'm going to keep thinking on that one. And uh, again, this is just me going through my thought process. Hopefully, I'll come back and we'll see something, um, something that's kind of holding it in place. All right, so this is... One idea that I'm kind of going with, I tried a few different ways of, of different types of card, thickness of card material, to try and do this. As much as I said I wanted to avoid using card, it was more on 
the building itself on the roof I'm kind of okay with by the time you know we would actually paint on the matte varnish rather than just using the spray matte varnish I think it would be fine I don't think it's going to warp too much like the platforms did where it was more kind of structural stuff so um, having seen how the matte varnish worked I'm, I'm a little bit happier with with roofing materials for card but you know the walls and, and the roof trusses I wanted to use wood but this is kind of one idea that I've got and so it's basically um, thin cardstock I think it's um, I don't know what it is uh, 0 0.002 I don't know, I can look on that if this is what I go with. Um, but cut into one inch thin strips and then kind of put on at about normally 30 to 45 degree angle. Um, so this one, you know, when I trimmed it, it kind of started to come away from the bottom. But otherwise, it then follows the curve that way and it follows the curve that way because you're technically only, you're getting it to twist. Um, more so than say, okay, curve this way and curve that way. You're more saying, okay, just kind of twist your way around at an angle, almost like you were going to be going around in a spiral. That's kind of the idea that I've got here. Um, and then when it will be done, the actual roofing material could be that way, could be wider than that to replicate whatever kind of metal roof that I'll be doing sheet metal roofing. You know, would then come over like that and try and balance one there and then try and get another one to give the idea. You know, if this then butted up like that, then I think that would be fine where, again, I don't care that they're not necessarily having to flex two wears there. You know, but if they then came over just fine, you wouldn't really see that you've got these ridges you know, that's thick enough that when it's glued down, you can't see it, or would be glued down, you can't see it coming through. It's kind of a lot of work <laughs> to do this. It is a little messy as well. Uh, I need to put a little bit more glue on the bottom there to hold that in place. Um, but that's kind of the idea that I think I'm going to go with. So I've got a whole bunch more <laughs> one inch thin, uh, one inch thick, however you want to look at it, thick strips to do. Um, but this is kind of the best way <laughs> i found so far to be able to do a flex. I'm doing all of this, you know, with the mindset that <laughs> this is the small one. This extension is the small one. I've still got, you know, three more to do. You know, and the middle one is like five and a half feet. The far one I can kind of just kind of plow into <laughs> that blue backboard and kind of cheat a little bit. Um, you know, but this is the smallest of the ones that I have to do. I've got another three uh, to do the same when I was doing the platforms, you know, so whatever I do here, I need to be careful with to make sure that it's not just complete mind-numbing, um, tedium and time-consuming. But again, my, my, my thought is the same way that I was able to trim these, because I'm gluing them, what I can then do is then wherever I decide that line is going to be, I can then cut through. It's the thought anyway. So I want to keep going, uh, seeing if this... Seeing if this still makes sense once the rest of it is done, and then we'll come back and have a look. So I'm kind of feeling like, at that point of a home a home improvement project, some kind of remodeling, where you've got the drywall hung up, but you haven't really even got the, the first layer of mud on or any of the joint, uh, the joint mud on over the tap, and it just looks like a mess. Um, so, needing to have a little bit of vision here, and I'm trying to, you know, maintain a little bit of vision here, but... It does actually seem like it would work again once you would have these other pieces that were kind of beyond and wrapped around and hiding it. I do actually think it would work because it is it is curving that way. I have followed it pretty much along the wall, and you know these edges can be glued down and they will be covered with the actual brick facing that would go on there. And we also then have the curve of the roof that way. And it is giving fairly solid. It's still a little wet in places, but it is somewhat solid. And so I think once there's a layer of matte varnish that I paint on, once the once the rocket glue is all dried, if I put on a layer of matte varnish now just to harden that, then by the time I put the strips on that way, and on the inside as well to cover it, so it's maybe a little bit fiddly um, to do both the inside and the outside, 
but I actually think that that would work. Based on a comment that I got from the first part, um, and I'm totally forgetting your name, I apologize, Phil Eyre, I think, um, had said that he had been doing some of the engineering work when they were actually redoing the roofing on uh, both the Dobson train shed, which is the three main parts, and then this extension. Um, you know, and so he had suggested, and I think one or two others had suggested as well, um, make these glazing sections a bit bigger, which is kind of what I think I had talked about in one of the previous little clips um, on here that I was thinking of making a little bit bigger. So I have extended it somewhat, so when you come from the side, you get the idea that, you know, the other part that I'll wrap up comes to about there, which is about kind of what I was thinking, that we'd have a third roofing, a third of it roofing, and then a large glazing section section on top. Not sure how much that would really buy me unless I'm right here looking down, um, but at least I would be able to see some of the interior detailing and uh, hopefully it would also just kind of help light things up a little bit. So I think it's one way I just have to keep going with this vision. I'm going to do the other side now, which is going to get fun um, because I'm pretty sure once I move the, the spaghetti meatballs, it's going to lose its flex a little bit. Um, but I'm going to try and do that back side, let it dry, trim it, cut it like this, um, and then get that layer of matte varnish on and see how it's looking from there. I'm hoping that I could still peel everything off if it does look terrible. Um, you know, if it if it's not going to work, then honestly, it's it's you know I'm out the cost of the the wood for all the spars that I did. But again, one of the advantages of doing it laser cut is that I just tell the computer, hey, go ahead and cut this. It's not like I had to sit down and manually calculate each of these and cut them out by hand in cardstock or something like that. Um, so the cost of material was maybe ten dollars. Um, all told, so if I do have to scrap this, uh, once I get this roofing done, I don't like the look of it, okay. Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep moving on, and we'll come back and, and see if it's starting to look like something. Alright then, so I've come into the garage with this now. It was just too damn cold out in the trench shed, although I'm not sure if it's really that much warmer in the garage. Um, but uh, now that the card strips on top there have dried up, I uh, got both sides done and then kind of put uh, a little bit of a trim piece on the top on both sides. Uh, have then put pretty copious uh, layer or two of that lacquer over it, uh, just a, a clear varnish. This is what I used on top of the platforms when I went through and repaired them and then decided that I am not going to try and spread these with uh, any kind of matte varnish. I am not going to run the risk of these whooping and, and having problems like I did with the platform, so um, there's a little wavy there just because of, um, you know, the card itself was not super thick because I needed it to be flexible, and so then with the rocker glue and then with the varnish um, has absorbed some of that. I kind of knew that that was going to be the case, um, but again, try and grab a piece. This is a little bit thicker than what I would be using. Um, it's probably going to be about half the width of this, but the actual roofing material then will go over the top and so you'll kind of lose that effect so kind of like I had said on the previous little clip out in the shed I feel like this is when you're doing the, the bathroom remodel or a kitchen remodel and you've hung the drywall and, and I, I guess maybe now we've got uh, now we've got the tape on and maybe as uh, we started uh, putting a coat of mud over the tape tapping up the joints and that's about it and so now that's kind of where we're at and so we're still slowly working our way up but I am kind of okay with the gap that we have on the roof that would then be for glazing to go in I haven't quite figured out glazing yet but I got a couple of good ideas um, come to that in a little bit so I'm going to let this uh, get, let this coat of, of varnish dry up make sure it looks good and then we can start to uh, print out a couple of different ideas that I've got for roofing materials kind of put those on and uh, and see how it looks. I did also do all the wood as well with that varnish just since I was doing it like I said I don't want to run the risk but let this dry might take a day or two for this to dry and then we'll try putting on some roofing material um, and see how it looks. Alright, so if we stick with this terrible analogy of doing home remodeling, now I guess we've got the skim coat on, uh, we've got the top coat on, and we've even got a coat of paint on. We don't really have many of the detailing pieces on. We don't have um, any tram pipes on here, we don't have any of the capstones on here, uh, none of the doors or the windows. 
have been put in place. And they've also only done this side. Um, happy with how it turned out. It's not quite how I envisioned it, but it's probably about as good as I thought it was going to end up being. And again, it's not, not in a finished state at all. And I struggled a little bit on materials. I tried two or three different materials in terms of what I wanted uh, the brickwork to look like, what I wanted the roof to look like. The roof, I think, is too light. It's not dark enough. Um, there's not really enough of a difference, I feel, between the brick and between the actual roof itself. And then the lights maybe aren't helping either because they're casting a little bit of a shine off the top of it as well. The brickwork I, th I think I do like. Um, I wanted something that was a little bit darker, at least on the outside. On the inside, um, it might not quite be as worn and, and weathered like this. And so kind of what I'm thinking is there will be um, some kind of capstoning around here or guttering around here and then drain pipes that will kind of come down pretty much right around where the paper joins are to be honest to kind of try and help hide those a little bit. Um, totally blanking on uh, where I got this from, uh, scale scenes I think. And the brickwork itself is Asha stone, and then the roofing is zinc roofing. Um, didn't really have a lot of different options that I could find on roofing that I like. Most of them were, again, they were some kind of corrugated iron, corrugated steel, um, rusted corrugated steel, and it just didn't really look right either. So this is okay. Um, again, it's a balance. It's not quite how it would look for real. Um, and it is a little bit lighter, so I need to try and figure out if I can put a little bit of weathering powder on it to kind of darken it up some. Um, and then the brickwork, I think in th the brick would actually have been sandstone. Um, so the brick might have been a little bit bigger than this, um, but the more stereotypical kind of brickwork that I had seen was too small, didn't look right, and wasn't right, it was not at all what it looked like. So I think this is a decent balance. You know, and so if we come back, we do definitely have a curve of the building itself going that way. I'm trying to look at it head on, and you can see a little bit better. So it is definitely curving around the platform itself and then you have the curve of the roof itself so I'm quite happy with how that looks. Yes I haven't painted the um, the roofing beams black. I haven't done the inside either. I just kind of wanted to leave it like this. Um, but this has been covered, uh, the paint on uh, matte varnish as well, that clear lacquer so it should be pretty good out here. And there's really only a couple of areas where I'm not super happy about one is right around there. You might be able to see. Um, I think actually that roof beam came up a little bit higher, like literally half a millimeter, if that. Um, you know, but that's enough of a something like this to uh, to throw that off. But otherwise, I'm quite happy with how that looks. Try and move it inside. And so now you start to get some kind of idea of these curved roofs that really make Newcastle what Newcastle is, in my mind. So, thank you very much to everyone who has left comments uh, along the way. I think I'm probably going to leave it like this, because it is right around Christmas, and, you know, the kids are going to have a bunch of stuff that they're going to be playing with, but um, I'm going to leave this one here and just pause and think and make sure that this is how I want it to look, that this is how I want the material to be, see if I can figure out something to do on the roofing, or if I do need to do a completely different kind of roofing to make it darker and make a difference between the roof and the stone there. I think also it'll it'll kind of pop a little bit more, because I have to remember that there's going to be um, a canopy that comes out, probably about halfway up this wall. There's a, a small canopy that comes out to cover this little platform here as well. Um, you know, so I think now, because it's just such a big flat wall, it looks a little weird. Um, and then I haven't quite figured out what material to do on the inside as well, because it, it looks quite different. Um, you know, on the inside, it almost looks um, like the cross pieces go that way. So whereas here, they're kind of following the curve. On the inside, the photos that I've seen, um, the, the material kind of runs perpendicular to it. So 
I need to figure out the materials on the inside, uh, and my, that might make a difference as well, because really this is the only exterior wall where you're going to see the roof join. Um, and then maybe it's down here on this main part of the Dobson shed here. You probably would have it as well. Um, but otherwise, I am happy with how this looks. Uh, from the other side, you can see a little bit more of the joins. Again, just through the camera, it's not as noticeable in real life, but again, the curves are definitely there that I was hoping to be able to capture. And it does seem to look, I guess, I, about as good as I figure I'd be able to do. Um, and then once the rest of the detailing pieces are on, I'm also going to pause because across the top here where the glazing is, it's actually more of a, a, a triangle shape. The glazing doesn't quite follow all the way around. This is both on the extension um, and on the main Dobson shed itself with the other three arches. So I do need to figure out how to do that. Um, and that's the wind outside telling me to, to stop hanging out in the train shed because it is cold out here. It is windy out here. Um, this is going to be it for now. Thanks for following along. Please do keep leaving comments. Please do keep sharing stories and photos that you have of Newcastle. It has been beyond helpful getting all the different photos that people have been sharing of Newcastle Central um, in the 80s. Um, I've seen a lot of reference photos, but the more photos obviously helps and give me extra ideas. Now I just need to be able to actually do it all justice, to be quite honest. And uh, having seen the amount of interior photos people have shared and interior detailing, um, yeah, now I feel like I have to step up the modeling of it. I wasn't going to be going that serious, but now that I've seen uh, how excited some people are and of all the photos that I can now reference, then, then maybe I will. So please do keep the comments coming. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about the materials that are in use. Um, and we'll, I'll, be, I'll be back again soon. Bye-bye.